Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. This time we are going to talk about the dynamic behavior of a measurement system. Last videos was about the static behavior of a measurement system. Okay, now we have a dynamic behavior as well. This is different. Yeah? What is dynamic behavior? This is actually what we have already talked about in, in static behavior. We have some measurement system, we have an input value and we have an output value. The input value is so the, the physical entity, the physical unit, which is influencing the measurement system, which I want to determine. And XO, the output is the displayed value. Okay? This was actually pretty much the same picture as I've drawn for the, the, uh, for the static behavior. And we said, okay, there is some sort of characteristic between XO and XI and so on, and there is the, the sensitivity. Static. Okay? Dynamic now means that this XI is not XI, is changing over time. It's XI from T. So also the output XO is changing over time. Yeah? So, and now it depends how fast this input is changing and how fast our measurement system can react on this change. Is the output dynamically different from the input or not? Yeah? If this change is rather slow yeah, for the measurement system, then the output will be able to follow the change. If the input is changing rather fast, then the output will not follow. Yeah, so we will not stay on this characteristic curve. We will have difference from it, dynamic difference. Okay. Think about, I don't know, if you're vegetarian, think about putting an apple on a, on, on, uh, a scale. And if you're not a vegetarian, think about putting a steak or I don't know, put something on this, on a scale. All right. If you put it on a scale, book, then it will land there. The, the, the pointer will go up, maybe swing a little bit, and then it will point. Yeah? So this, this, it is already there. It still shows zero, and then it is reacting. Yeah? Because simply, you know, you need to, to accelerate masses. You need to overcome some, some friction and so on. So these are things which make the, the measurement system react slower than it's actually happening. And this is exactly what the dynamic behavior is describing. So how to describe it? Usually the measurement system can be described with some sort of, of uh, differential equation. Ah! Finally, we are there. We are using differential equations, right? Everybody likes them. <laughs> yes, there is a way of how to mathematically describe such measurement systems with differential equations. That's not that easy. Yeah? So in this matter, we are not doing this. Yeah? There is another series of videos of control controls with feedback where we are talking about exactly those things. Yeah, but it's... Now, for measurement, we are making an empiric approach. Okay? So, we will use a certain input scenario yeah, and record the output. So, we will have here some recording device. Hmm? which is measuring the input, yeah? so taking the input and records it, and also taking the output at the same time and records it as well. So here we have XO and we also have XI. And if xi, I don't know, has a certain certain form, like that, this is what we want to measure, then our output maybe is here a little bit later, yeah? maybe is here a little bit not that far, 
and in the end we will reach somewhere the same value. Huh? So that we simply record both input and output values over time and then we can tell, well, okay, that's a dynamic behavior. Huh? Then we can determine the dynamic behavior. All right, but which form must the input have to really determine the dynamic behavior? All right, there are usually three type of so-called test functions. Okay, there are three types of test functions. Yeah. So if xi, first test function is a step. Step. Looks like that. At a certain point in time, the input is suddenly changing. Okay? There's the time t. Yeah? And the output is recorded. Here's the time t. This would be the input value. And my output is recording accordingly. Here it will be the same. And here it will react somehow and then finally reach the end value. I don't know. And out of this reaction, yeah. To this step, yeah, I can determine the dynamic behavior. Yeah. So this this here is called a step response. Okay. First test function, second test function is a sine, sine wave, right? So the input looking somehow like that. Yeah. Ooh. Ah. Should be sinus. <laughs> Looking somehow like that, yeah. And the output is recorded accordingly, yeah. If this is the input, the output might be a little bit later. A little bit smaller, something like that. And out of this we can also determine the dynamic behavior. All right. So this is the sine response or frequency response. That's also a possible test function, and there's also a third possible test function, and that's an impulse. This means, at a certain point in time, the input is doing an Book impulse and then go into zero again. Yeah. Like that. It's like hitting, I don't know, a drum. <laughs> One shot. Yeah. And if you make with a musical instrument, yeah, then you hear the, the result. Yeah. If you maybe hit a, a, I don't know, a string of a guitar, you hear, you hear this reaction. Yeah. 
Yeah, you hear this reaction, and here also the measurement system is reacting on this short impulse. Yeah, so there is somewhere the time t. The input is this impulse, and the output can have different forms. Yeah, here we will be zero. Yeah, then we will be doing something, and then maybe it's going down. Like that, yeah, so that something is done by this impulse. Okay, and out of this behavior, we could also determine the dynamic behavior. Yeah? So we are using characteristic. So this is the impulse response. Or weight function. This is called yeah? Sprung, Sprungantwort, Sinus, Sinusantwort oder Frequenzantwort, Impuls, Impulsantwort oder Gewichtsfunktion. Would be the German terms. Yeah? So these three test functions I could use to determine. Okay? And with the characteristic values, which we will hear in the coming up videos of these responses, I can determine if uh, dynamic behavior of a measurement system is good enough for my application or not. All right. So which one of those do I have to use? Huh? Do I have to use all three? Is it enough to have one? Which one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the answer is it's enough to have one and it doesn't really matter which one. From each of those test functions, you can determine the dynamic behavior of a measurement system precise enough. Okay? So what we are going to do in the next upcoming videos, we will have a look at the step response, we will have a look at the sign response, we will have a look at the impulse response. Yeah? We will do this for two different types of measurement systems. We will do this for first order and second order measurement systems. Okay? So Next video then is, now that we know what dynamic behavior is, next video we will talk about a system first order. We will talk about what is a system first order and we will have a look in the, in the step response of this system first order. Right? How does a step response of a system first order looks like? Looks like? I guess it's correct. Yeah, for this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.